Hello and welcome to Daily Prelims Practice, an initiative of Rouse IAS. Here we take up important articles from the Hindu and the Indian Express and curate MCQs as per the demand of the civil services exam. Articles covered today are shown on the screen and the detailed description in PDF and Word format can be found on the description box. So let us begin. Let's start with the first article of the day which you can find on the Hindus page 1. The article talks about that the Central Electricity Authority CEA, proposed that only power lines below 33 kV needs to be underground. Conservationists on the other hand, they argue that this move could threaten the existence of Great Indian Bustard. UPSC in the past has asked about endangered flora and fauna, which you can see from this PYQ of 2015. On the similar basis, we have drafted this practice question number 1. Consider the following statements regarding Great Indian Bustard. Statement 1. Its presence is restricted to the Indian subcontinent. Now this statement is correct as the species though formerly was widespread across India and Pakistan but now its population is estimated to be less than 200 and it spreads across states of Rajasthan, Gujarat, Maharashtra, Madhya Pradesh, Karnataka and Andhra Pradesh. Now second statement. It is included in the Appendix 1 of Sites. Now this statement is correct. As it is listed in Appendix 1 of Sites, it is also listed in Schedule 1 of the Wildlife Protection Act 1972 and is a state bird of Rajasthan. Statement 3rd. IUCN has categorized it as a vulnerable species. Now this statement is incorrect because IUCN has categorized it as a critically endangered species. From the above discussion, we can conclude that the statement 1 and 2 are correct which makes option A the right answer. As far as the PYQ is concerned, option A is also the right answer. Now moving on to the second article of the day which you can find on page 8 of the Hindu. It reports that the scientists at Johns Hopkins University have recently outlined a plan that has a potential to create biocomputers. Recent developments regarding biological inventions is important from prelims point of view, which is apparent from this PYQ of 2022 on DNA barcoding. On similar lines, here's practice question number 2. With reference to biocomputers, consider the following statements. Statement 1. Biocomputers can perform certain types of computations more efficiently and accurately than traditional computers. Now this statement is correct as biocomputers can outperform traditional computers particularly in areas related to sensing and responding to changes in the environment. Statement 2. Biocomputers cannot be integrated with electronic systems. Now this statement is incorrect. Although challenging to do so, biocomputers can be integrated with electronic systems. Statement 3. Biocomputers can be faster than the quantum computers. Now this statement is incorrect as the quantum computers are the fastest known computers and can outperform both biocomputers and traditional computers. Statement 4. Biocomputers are better situated for solving problems related to cryptography and cybersecurity. Now this statement is incorrect as these problems related to cryptography and cyber security can be better solved by quantum computers. Now which of the above statements is or are correct? From the above discussion it is clear that the statement 1 is correct making option A the correct answer. Now coming back to PYQ option D is the right answer. Now moving on to the third article of the day which is on page 12 of the Hindu. It reports that the guidelines for Urban Infrastructure Development Fund is likely to be released as capital expenditure by the central government has been increased by 33% in the budget of 2023 and 24, as well as the last year's announcement of National Infrastructure Pipeline, both of which highlight the need of infrastructure development for the growth of Indian economy. UPSC in previous year question of 2017 has asked about National Investment and Infrastructure Fund. On similar lines, here's the practice question. With reference to the Urban Infrastructure Development Fund, UIDF, which of the following statements is correct? Statement 1. It will be managed by the Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs. Now this statement is incorrect as the UIDF will be managed by National Housing Bank or NHB. Statement 2. It will be used by public agencies to create urban infrastructure in Tier 1, and tier 2 cities. Now this statement is also incorrect as the agencies will create urban infrastructure in tier 2 and 3 towns. Statement 3. 
the government will provide rupees 10000 crores per annum for the fund through budgetary allocations now this statement is also incorrect as the sum provided will be 10000 crores but it will be established through use of priority sector lending shortfalls from the above statement it is clear that the correct answer is option d as none of the above statements are correct with reference to the pyq option d is correct moving on to the fourth article of the day which is on page 8 of the indian express here an ex chief election commissioner has said that the political funding scheme through electoral bonds could be improved by appointing an independent watchdog. Elections of India in general and statutes governing the electoral process, funding, registration of political parties in particular have been a key area of interest for UPSC with respect to prelims, which is clear from this PYQ of 2021. On the similar basis, we have drafted the practice question number four. Consider the following statements with reference to the scheme of electoral bonds. Statement 1. The bonds under the scheme shall be available for purchase for a period of 10 days each in the months of January and July as may be specified by the central government. Now this statement is incorrect because the bonds under the scheme shall be available for purchase of 10 days each in the months of January, April, July and October. An additional period of 30 days shall also be given by the central government in the year of general election to the Lok Sabha. Statement 2. Electoral bonds would have a life of only 15 days. Now this statement is also correct. Statement 3. Electoral bonds can be used for making donations to any political party registered with the Election Commission of India. Now this statement is incorrect because electoral bonds can be used for making donations only to the political parties which are registered under Section 29A of the Representation of People's Act 1951 and also parties which secure more than 1% of the votes in the last general election to the Lok Sabha or Legislative Assemblies. From the above discussion, it is clear that the only statement 2 is correct which makes option B the correct answer. Now as far as the PYQ is concerned, option B is the right answer. Moving on to the fifth article of the day, which is on page 14 of the Indian Express. It reports that the Turkey is working to extend UN-backed initiative that has enabled Ukraine to export grain from ports blocked by Russia. Places and water bodies in news have been asked by UPSC from time to time, which is apparent from this PYQ of 2019 on seas and their bordering countries. On a similar basis, let us practice this question number five. Consider the following statements. Statement 1. The Kerch Strait connects Black Sea with Egan Sea. Statement 2. The Bosphorus Strait unites Black Sea and the Sea of Marmara. Statement 3. The Adenale Strait connects Sea of Marmara with Egan Sea. Now let us understand this question through a map. As you can see, the Kerch Strait connects Sea of Azov with Black Sea. Moving further southwest, Near Istanbul is the Bosphorus Strait, which connects Black Sea and Sea of Marmara. Further west is the Dardanelles Strait. Here, it connects Sea of Marmara with Egan Sea. Now, coming back to the question, we can say that the statement 1 is incorrect, as the Kerch Strait connects Black Sea with Sea of Azov, whereas statement 2 is correct, as well as statement 3 is also correct. Which of the following statements is or are correct? From the above discussion, we can say that the option B is the right answer. With respect to the PYQ, option B is the right answer. Now moving on to the last article of the day, which is on page 16 of the Indian Express. The news reports that the Lokayukta police in a raid at the residence of a Karnataka MLA seized 8 crores of unaccounted cash. Now constitutional bodies are important topics in the polity section which is clear from this PYQ of 2017. Here, UPSC asked a question on election commission. On the similar lines, here's the practice question number 6. Consider the following statements with reference to Lokpal and Lokayukta's Act 2013. Statement 1. Lokpal is a nine-member body. Now, this statement is correct, as Lokpal consists of one chairperson in addition to up to eight members. The chairperson shall be a Chief Justice of India or a present or former judge of a Supreme Court. 
50 percent of other members shall be a judicial member whereas a non-judicial member is required to have a 25 years experience in anti-corruption policy public administration vigilance and finance statement 2 the selection committee for the lokpal shall consist of prime minister leader of opposition of the lower house and the chief justice of india now this statement is incorrect as the members of the lokpal shall be appointed by the president on the basis of recommendation of the selection committee which consists of prime minister speaker of lok sabha leader of the opposition of lower house chief justice of india or a judge of supreme court nominated by him and an eminent jurist nominated by the president statement 3 an inquiry against the prime minister in all matters has to be held in camera and approval by a two-third majority of full bench of Lokpal. Now this statement is incorrect. Although the inquiry against the PM can be held in camera and approved by two-third of majority of the full bench, but the Prime Minister cannot be investigated in the complaints which is related to international relations, external and internal security, public order, atomic energy and space. Now which of the following statements given above is or are correct? From the above discussion, it is clear that the statement 1 is correct, thus making option A the right answer. As far as the PYQ is concerned, option D is the right answer.